Welcome to Becoming a Voice. I'm your host, Shreya Bopana, and with me today is Gabriel Brown, better known as Black Griffin. Whether you've heard of him from his wildly popular impressions videos, garnering millions of views on YouTube, his extensive voice acting career, including Pixar Story and Geronimo Stilton, or his incredible singing abilities from My Little Pony to his many albums, he's wowed his crowd of over 4.46 million channel followers and now he's trying to go to space. Thanks so much for joining us today, Gabe. We're so excited to hear from you. Thank you for the really warm introduction. <laughs> Before we dive into your background, tell us about your newest endeavor with SpaceX's Inspiration4. Yeah, so um, basically I've always wanted to be an astronaut and I don't think that's surprising. I think most people do. But um, I saw that Ship for Shop and CEO uh, Jared Isaacman were planning to do the first all civilian mission to space. And I thought, oh my gosh, here's my chance to bring my passion for science to an audience that might not get it otherwise. So I think there are a lot of people that aren't really that interested in space travel, mostly because it seems so out of reach. And so I was like, oh my gosh, this mission has a chance to change that by picking somebody who isn't a scientist or hasn't dedicated their entire life to the study of space exploration. Uh, they might just be an enthusiast who has a normal job, and that makes it more accessible, you know, which can massively drive the interest uh, of space exploration, which accelerates how quickly we make progress, which I'm very passionate about. I, I love the idea of spreading out into the stars, you know, building O'Neill cylinders, colonizing Mars, like all of that's just fascinated me, and I'm sure lots of other people most of my life. Um, so I was like, maybe... I actually have a chance to represent that, to represent your average person who just has, you know, a dream and drive uh, to to go to space. And then maybe people can look at me and go, oh my gosh, well, if he can do it, if this YouTuber can do it, maybe I can do it. And so, yeah. And I also, you know, at the same time, what I really want to highlight is that they're doing all of this and they're supporting St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So even if I don't win, I get to promote a really good cause. So that sold me. And I've, I've never entered an online competition before, but... Uh, couldn't pass this one up, so I'm giving it everything I've got. Where can audience members access your video and your shop? So uh, the entry for this uh, Inspiration4 contest is on Twitter. Um, so you just go to my Twitter account, at uh, Black Griffin. Uh, it'll be my pinned tweet, and you can find the link to my shift for shop there. I've got a uh, custom design merch that my sister, Naomi, actually designed. She's a graphic artist, and she's amazing. She designed the merch for this, and then if you buy the merch, um, I'm going to be donating all the proceeds from that shop to St. Jude's. So um, that's, yeah. And then you can watch my entry there, and if you think that I'm worthy of going, give it a like and retweet, because the more popular the tweet gets, the better my chances of going. Hi, my name is Gabriel Brown, but I'm more commonly known online as Black Griffin. Like many people, I've always wanted to be an astronaut. I build my own rockets, I watch every launch I can, I go outside every time the space station flies over, and I've been following SpaceX since Falcon 1. But as I'm sure you guessed, that didn't really pan out for me. I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome when I was 12, and while it came with its gifts like excellent memory, it also came with challenges. I didn't really fit in with the other kids and I was bullied a lot, but I was always taught never to use adversity as an excuse to stop trying. So I joined the US Navy out of high school and I qualified for SEAL training, but I ended up washing out due to a leg injury. Later, I moved to Vancouver in hopes of becoming a voice actor, but I had to move back in with my parents after a few years because I ran out of money. My point is, like most of us, I've had my share of disappointments, but it isn't about how many times you fail. It's about trying one more time. See, after I washed out of the seals, I became lead singer of the Seventh Fleet Band and used my ability to memorize to sing in the native language of every country I went to. After I ran out of money in Vancouver, I used my ability to imitate to build a YouTube channel with millions of subscribers. When I couldn't afford flight school, I built a paramotor and taught myself how to fly. When one door closes, another door always opens. You just have to keep trying. Thanks to SpaceX, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, e-commerce platform Shift for Shop, and its founder, world record holding pilot Jared Isaacman, the first all civilian mission to space is happening, and we all have a chance to get aboard. Anyone can enter, this is my entry. I am opening an official Black Griffin space-themed merch line on Shift for Shop to show the world that the proverbial door to space is opening. You no longer need to be a scientist, doctor, or highly trained military pilot to go into orbit. You don't even need a college degree. All you need is the dream, the drive, and the passion to keep moving forward until you find the right door. I want to bring the mystery and wonder of space to the everyday person while simultaneously supporting an amazing cause. So, until mid-March, I will be donating all of the proceeds from my Shift for Shop store 
to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. I want to bring the entire audience I've built up over the years on this journey with me. I want to sing songs in orbit, dance in a spacesuit, and prove to the world that space travel is possible, even for YouTubers like me. I believe mankind's future is among the stars, and the more we talk about it, dream about it, and inspire each other, the sooner we'll get there. Many loyal fans may know that you're actually a U.S. Navy veteran. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Yeah, so um, I uh, joined the Navy to be a part of the SEAL program. Before that, I was a scuba diver in Alaska. I did on water photography, and uh, I was really passionate about that. I, I love photography. And uh, I joined the military because I wanted to serve my country, but I also wanted to get the scuba diving and the skydiving experience um, to be able to use that experience to get shots that no one had gotten before. Also, um, a lot of astronauts, actually 33% um, of all American astronauts are in the military. So I'm like, hey, you know, if I join the military, maybe I have a better shot at doing this. Uh, but unfortunately I had broken my leg um, a few years prior to joining the Navy. I'd fallen off a cliff uh, at age 17, free climbing. So be careful. Everyone thinks they're invincible when they're that age. Um, but I got it uh, pinned, a titanium rod put in it, um, and then I actually had the rod removed so I could join the military. And I was able to get that waived and pass the PST, but then during training I actually injured it again, and I couldn't get my run times back up. But I didn't get medically discharged, I could still, you know, qualify. The regular PRT, physical readiness test, isn't the same as the Navy SEAL PST, physical screening test. So I qualified for being in service, I just couldn't run fast enough to be in the Navy SEALs per se. So I became a gunner's mate, which is basically just a weapons specialist, and I'd already studied the weaponry, so I figured this will just be an easy transition, and then maybe if I can strengthen my leg again, I can, you know, go back into the SEALs. And at that time, I found out about the U.S. Navy Band, and I was like, oh, hey, well, I sing. I'll, I'll audition for that. Maybe that'll be fun. And I got in, and I went to the School of Music uh, in Virginia for uh, six months, and then I got stationed in yeah, Japan. Virginia. Yeah! <laughs> That's right. I'm from, I'm from Virginia. I was born in Annapolis, but I lived in Virginia for four years. It was very beautiful. No way. Yeah, yeah. But then anyway, yeah, so I, um, I was, when I was in Japan, um, I found out that, so I've, I've always been really good at memorizing things, and I don't know if I mentioned, but I was diagnosed with uh, Asperger's when I was a kid, and I had some trouble with social skills, which I think is pretty typical uh, for people with uh, high-functioning autism. Um, but I also was really good at mimicry and imitating, and I actually was able to use that. When I was a kid, I used it to figure out how to talk to people <laughs> just by watching how other people communicate. Um, eye contact, that was a hard one <laughs> for me. But um, then eventually I was able to use the imitation ability to learn songs in the native language of every country I went to. So I sang in about 10 different languages, 25 different songs in 10 different languages over the course of the three years that I was stationed in Japan. And that massively boosted um, the U.S. Navy's like presence and, and rapport with our host nations, which was a really wonderful opportunity. And I'm, I'm really glad that it worked out that way. Let's switch gears and talk about your YouTube channel. Your most popular impressions video has over 125 million views, but you also genre switch and produce original music. Can you walk us through that process from concept to final product? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when I first started my YouTube channel, it was mostly for like sketches and, and the original music that me and my brother were writing together. Uh, it didn't get super popular off the bat. But when I, uh, after I got out of the military and I tried to become a voice actor in Vancouver and I, I ran out of money, I moved back in with my parents and I'm like, okay, well, I need to make money now. <laughs> I'm 24. I should start, you know. Uh, so I'm like, well, what do I already have that I can market? And I had my original music and I figured I need to find a way to push this. Uh, to a bigger audience and it's really all about taking advantage of the YouTube algorithm so you can be really talented and that's in important if you're talented but the most important thing is making sure people see what you can do because if no one sees it it doesn't matter you could be the best performer singer artist whatever in the world and and no one's gonna care because no one's gonna know so I basically started doing impression videos to kind of take advantage of the algorithm which is always you know pushing these big artists, um, their labels are spending millions to, to put them in the system, to get their names out there. And so if you can imitate somebody or do a cover of somebody and tag those names, you won't get the money for it. YouTube will actually take the revenue from you and give it to the artist, which is fair because it's their IP, they own the song. 
but you also get a lot of views for that. So I did, the reason my video has so many views is because I did 54 different artists and I was able to use their names, which then, you know, the algorithm then drove traffic to my video under their name, drove the money to them, but then I was able to use that video to promote my work, which does make me money. So I guess I kind of tangented there. From concept, concept is simple. I just watch the artist for about 10 minutes, watch the segment of the song that I'm trying to imitate, uh, memorize their nuances, not only uh, the way that they sound, but the facial expressions and shapes, because that also changes the way that you sound, um, the way that your mouth is shaped. And like, one thing people don't realize is formant is actually a really big part of um, your voice. So it can sound higher pitch and really it's the exact same pitch. It's just, you're changing the shape of your throat slightly. So that is how you learn to sound like somebody and then you pick up on idiosyncrasies like maybe they have a tiny lisp, maybe they pronounce words slightly differently, um, maybe they hold their consonants longer, you know, memorizing that part is important. And then from that moment, I just, I go to thrift shop and I buy a whole bunch of costumes that, <laughs> that match, spend like 200 bucks on a whole bunch of crazy costumes. My closet is too small. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, then I film it and, uh, I'll find a karaoke track or my brother will produce the track if I can't find a good one. And then yeah, shoot the video, edit it, upload it. This would be a great time to also plug your brother, Nathaniel Brown, who's a producer called Basic Music. Can you talk about his work? Yeah. So my brother's name is Nathaniel Brown. He goes uh, by Basic or Basic Music Online, spelled B-A-A-S-I-K. Um, and he produces music. Um, he's savant level talented. He can produce music in any genre of any sound masterfully. He's been doing it since he was 12. And uh, he's incredibly good. So if you want to check out the stuff he's done, just look up basic music on YouTube. Your claim to fame was through the My Little Pony fandom. Can you talk about that experience? So I've always, um, I've always felt a certain kinship with the Misfits, as I said, growing up, I mean, being a little bit of an outcast, being a little bit of an oddball. Um, and when the My Little Pony fandom surfaced, it was really intriguing to me because, and I think you understand, because if I may, you, I <laughs> you told me, yeah, that you actually discovered me through the fandom related work. So you were kind of involved with that too. But yeah, I was 20 at the time and uh, the fandom was mostly comprised of young adults who were, for whatever reason, really interested in the show. But what I liked about it is it challenged the stereotype that you must enjoy certain things if you're a, a certain gender or age. And it just kind of opened people's minds to the fact that yes, you can be a perfectly healthy functioning human being and still be a little unusual. Um, and the best part for me though, was the fan content. So there was like, there was the show, which was clearly geared towards children. And then there were people that were taking the show and they were taking the assets and they were taking the characters and they were making like these incredible animations and songs. And like, some of them were hilariously brilliant. Some of them were really like emotional and interesting. It was just really fascinating. And that was my first involvement with fandoms. And as I became more involved with it, I actually learned some more things that I didn't know. It was, it was a growing experience for me. Cause I, then I saw some things that I didn't really like and, like anything, it was just like, it was like growing up, like a second growing up where you're introduced to something that's new and it's all sunshine and roses. And then you start to see the darker corners of things. And, you know, eventually I just kind of grew out of it, but it got me established and I learned a lot of valuable lessons from it. So yeah, I wouldn't change it. So what can fans look forward to next? Whether that be YouTube, life, voice acting. Um, I'm doing a, a song for a Lego project and that's the most I'm allowed to say about that one. Um, I also have a double album coming out on March 1st, uh, something that's really new for me. I'm singing as a puppet in a preschool music band called The Treebies, and it's a collaboration I've been working on for about a year with Daniel Ingram, My Little Pony songwriter. And we're basically, he, he just had a son. And so his goal was to bring really high quality songs to families with really young kids. So we've been working on that. That's been really fun. I also sing the scene, that, that. I also, sing the theme song for a new show coming out on Netflix that I can't talk about. And um, I worked with Steve Odekirk, who did Bruce Almighty, Ace Ventura, Patch Adams, Jimmy Neutron. This was really fun. Uh, on a Star Wars parody of The Rise of Skywalker called The Thighs of Skyskipper. So if you've seen Kung Pao Enter the Fist, which is also Steve Odekirk, it's in that vein. Super random, super weird, but it's coming out soon and I'm really looking forward to that. Where can the audience follow your journey? Uh, you can follow me on YouTube under Black Griffin. That's spelled with a zero because the Griffin with an O was taken. B-L-A-C-K-G-R-Y-P-H-0-N. So cool. All the kids are doing it. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to uh, follow me 
and support me on my attempt to be one of the first four civilians in orbit. Actually, there have been civilians in orbit before. A part of the first all civilian mission to orbit. Huh. Um, you can check out my tweet. Um, and I feel like I have to say this because I would I just I wouldn't feel right if I didn't as badly as I want this. I'm only asking you to support me if you watch my video and you think I'm worthy of the seat. There are lots of other entries and I don't want to win by asking for favors. I want to earn this. That's that's been my goal this entire time in my whole life. Things have always worked out best for me and I've always felt the best about things when I put in the effort and I earn it. So yes, go check out my video. Check out everyone's video. But if you feel like um, you, you like what I, uh, my mission and my goal, please like and retweet. Well, I'm sure everyone is happy to help you on your mission. Thank you so much for joining us today, Gabe. It was a pleasure getting to know you.